Every gardener knows compost is the backbone of fertile soil, but what if the single best ingredient for transforming waste into rich black humus is something most people toss in the recycling bin? Cardboard. Not the glossy, ink-covered stuff, but plain brown corrugated cardboard. It's the hidden composting powerhouse that large-scale growers and even waste companies would rather you not think about because it takes what they call waste and turns it into nutrient gold for free. For gardeners who want healthier soil, thriving worms, and water-retentive raised beds, understanding the cardboard composting secret could be the turning point. And when applied correctly, results show up fast, in moisture retention, in microbial activity, and in the resilience of crops during drought. Why cardboard is more than just brown waste. At its core, cardboard is made from wood pulp. That means it's cellulose, lignin, and carbon, the same materials that leaves, straw, and sawdust provide to a compost pile. But cardboard has two advantages, structure and availability. Its corrugated layers trap air pockets, which helps aerate compost piles. And since most households accumulate boxes weekly, it's a carbon source that costs nothing and comes in steady supply. Unlike straw or sawdust, which can be hard to source or expensive in urban areas, cardboard is already in your hands. The real secret, however, is how well worms and microbes respond to it. Worms are drawn to the glue that binds corrugated layers, a starch-based adhesive that breaks down quickly. Microbes break down the cellulose fibers steadily, releasing energy for decomposers and creating long-lasting humus. When shredded and combined with nitrogen-rich materials, cardboard transforms a compost pile into a microbe factory. The balance between cardboard and greens makes or breaks the pile. The single biggest mistake people make with cardboard composting is throwing in sheets of whole boxes. Left like that, cardboard mats down, repels water, and creates anaerobic pockets. The key is to shred it, soak it, and mix it in the right ratio with nitrogen-rich materials. Compost thrives when the carbon-to-nitrogen ratio hovers around 25 or 30 parts carbon to 1 part nitrogen. Cardboard has a very high carbon content, often over 350 to 1, meaning it needs a strong nitrogen partner to decompose efficiently. So for practical application, one wheelbarrow of shredded cardboard pairs well with about two wheelbarrows of fresh green waste, like grass clippings, vegetable scraps, or manure. For example, if you're layering a compost pile, you could spread about 3 inches of wet, shredded cardboard, followed by 6 inches of kitchen scraps and weeds, then cap it all off with another thin layer of cardboard. Over a few weeks, the pile will heat up and then mellow into a worm-friendly zone. Cardboard works best when it is prepared properly. Not all cardboard is created equal. The glossy, heavily inked or plastic-coated types should really be avoided, since those coatings resist breakdown and may introduce toxins. The best choice is plain brown corrugated cardboard or even craft paper. To prepare it for composting, just cut or tear it into small pieces. Some gardeners like to run it through a paper shredder or soak it in a bin of water overnight until it becomes pulp-like. The soaking step is actually critical. It not only softens the fibers but also prevents the cardboard from matting when added to the pile. For those with larger gardens, a practical method is to dedicate a rain barrel or tote for soaking cardboard. Every week, just add broken down boxes and fill with water. By the weekend, you'll have softened cardboard that can be mixed with greens immediately, saving time and accelerating decomposition. One of the often overlooked benefits of cardboard composting is its direct relationship with worm populations. Earthworms and red wigglers move into cardboard layers pretty quickly, feeding on the softened fibers and the microbial film that coats them. In vermicomposting bins, shredded cardboard is often used as bedding, not just because worms love it, but because it holds moisture without going anaerobic when it's fluffed up. For raised beds, incorporating finished cardboard-rich compost results in soils that hold water longer and, honestly, host more worms per square foot. A gardener who mixes one part cardboard compost with two parts garden soil will often notice worm castings increasing significantly after just a season, especially when combined with mulches that keep the soil surface moist. Worm activity translates to better soil tilth, aeration, and nutrient cycling. Gardeners working in drought-prone regions will find cardboard to be a silent ally. 
When composted, its organic matter holds water like a sponge, reducing the frequency of irrigation. But even before full decomposition, cardboard sheets can be strategically placed at the base of raised beds as a moisture barrier. For example, when starting a new raised bed, lay down a 1-inch layer of soaked cardboard before adding soil. Over time, this layer breaks down while preventing initial weed pressure from below. Meanwhile, it acts as a moisture-retaining mat, which is particularly effective in sandy soils where water drains too quickly. When combined with compost tea or diluted molasses solutions, microbial life colonizes the cardboard barrier, turning it into a living sponge that slowly releases nutrients. Compost tea and molasses bring cardboard piles to life faster. Cardboard by itself can take months to break down if left dry and unattended. To speed things up, feed the pile. A simple compost tea made by steeping finished compost in water for 24 to 48 hours inoculates cardboard with billions of active microbes. Pouring this over shredded cardboard layers jumpstarts decomposition. Adding a small amount of molasses to the tea, about 2 tablespoons per gallon, provides sugars that fuel microbial growth. Within days the pile heats up and begins breaking down stubborn fibers. For raised bed gardeners, applying compost tea enriched with cardboard humus directly to the soil delivers both microbial inoculation and moisture retention benefits. Crops like tomatoes and peppers respond with stronger root development when soil biology is active. The humus formed from decomposed cardboard has staying power. Unlike fast decomposing kitchen scraps, the lignin in cardboard breaks down into stable organic matter that resists further decomposition. This stability means soils improved with cardboard compost continue to benefit for years. The result is a raised bed that doesn't just grow strong crops in one season but improves with every year of application. For example, mixing half a cubic foot of finished cardboard compost per square foot into a raised bed provides a foundation of organic matter that keeps feeding soil biology. Gardeners who repeat this annually often report richer soil structure, darker tilth, and plants that withstand dry spells without wilting as quickly. Cardboard composting isn't just a trick to reduce waste. It's a genuine soil-building secret that transforms raised beds into thriving ecosystems. By shredding, soaking, and balancing it with nitrogen-rich greens, gardeners can unlock microbial life, attract worms, and build water-holding soils. Whether used as a bedding layer, a compost ingredient, or a mulch barrier, cardboard proves itself as more than packaging. It's a renewable tool for soil health. For those serious about long-term fertility and resilience, don't throw away your boxes. Use them, turn them into humus, and let your soil be the proof. If you found this guide useful, subscribe to Hydro Haven for more deep dives into composting, soil hacks, and regenerative gardening methods. Share this with fellow growers because the more of us who learn these secrets, the stronger our gardens and our soils will become.